Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. This is going to be really, really fun. I thought of this last night and I was like, oh man, this is going to be great. So what this video is, is uh, we've talked about um, penciling comics over a period of, of a couple of years. And uh, one of the examples that I always give uh, aspiring pencilers is I say, look, you have to be ready to draw anything. And I swear, nine times out of ten, you can you can be so prepared. You've done it all. You've worked on your anatomy. You can do superhero poses. You've been f studying the David Finch videos, and he's shown you how to draw big buff arms and pretty girls' faces, and it's it's all there for you. You've got it, and you finally get you say you get a job. Marvel Comics hires you, or DC Comics hires you, if that's what you're into. You're going to do Batman, Vaxman, and you get the script. The editor's so excited for you. You're going to love it. I read this one. It's awesome. This is, this is going to be a great story the fans are going to remember. That's what they tell you. And then they go, but <laughs> it's a little different. Um, uh, no one's going to be in costume, and it all takes place uh, at, at a cocktail party, or it all takes place in a bedroom. No one's going to be in costume. No one's doing anything exciting. And now you are left to figure out how the hell to do a fun comic book that you're the one that people are going to enjoy looking at. And two, you're going to enjoy drawing. So settle in, friends. I think you're going to enjoy this video. Seriously, who, who does videos like this? Only me. All right. So here, here's the deal. Real quick first, go to the Blaster Kid pre-launch page. Because I assure you, there are no boring pages in Blaster Kid. You know why? I wrote it. She's always in costume. She's always killing people. No, I'm just kidding. She doesn't always kill people. Who knows? Maybe she doesn't even kill people. She might be a pacifist. <laughs> but anyway, so check that out. And then, uh, yeah, let's get to this. So so I was talking to my friend James. And, and uh, we, were, we both agree. Like Todd McFarlane is someone who will draw the shit out of stuff. He always seems to make it fun and exciting. And the, the saying out there, as I said to James, is what would Todd do? So I figured, what would Todd do in a situation like this? So what I did is I went through about three or four issues of Spider-Man, and I tried to find pages that that, that fit the bill of, of um, non-superhero activity. But there are, there are some pages where it teeters into more interesting things. But I wanted to give a wide variety of, of challenges that we might face as the artist when you get a script, when um, the writer decides that that uh, your comics are going to not have them in costume and that they're not going to be doing superhero stuff because that's more common than you might believe. Trust me. <laughs> so anyway, let's do this. All right, so Todd McFarlane has Peter Parker at a fancy cocktail party. Peter is a teenager. I don't know if he's completely comfortable in this fast-paced world that Mary Jane um, would be... Uh, privy to at this point um you know this this could be more her sort of environment but he looks happy he looks comfortable uh todd plays with the size of uh, objects in the thing i always talk about this it's a big thing that i i say always always will make a page interesting is look at the size of this and then look at the size of this and then look at the size of this. Now, one thing that I warn people with the size relationship, and I'll try to find another page as we move along, um, that, that it's not always just, it's really the point of interest on a page that I judge the size by. Like this is the point of interest in this panel. This is the point of interest in this panel. This is the point of interest in this panel or this, but, but, the size relationship isn't always as cut and dry as is. Some people will think that they're mixing up their sizes when everything is really similar. Todd does another very interesting thing here. Do you see this V shape? He pulls me right down to this panel and then this opens me wide back up. So it's a really, really nice sensation of zoop and then zoop. And then we come down here and he juxtaposes these hands like this. He swishes this over here. We've got this great hand motion and he's made a very lively and simple, like simple meaning that look at Peter's tux. It's black the whole time. So he never, ever had to draw. Todd, we'll talk about this. 
I didn't want to draw it, so I just blacked it out. Forget about it. He's not actually from the East Coast, though. He's Canadian. Whoa, 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 Rich, you're getting, you're out of control. Um, but uh, yeah, if Todd doesn't want to draw anything, he won't draw it. <laughs> In general. When, the, the, here's the deal, though. When, when even though Todd was rebellious and I think really pushed on on spider-man and, and obviously todd would know better than anyone but but there were probably still demands placed on him that maybe uh, intrinsically he wouldn't have been as into although with spawn he does bounce back and forth between the two but nice simple background here uh, everyone is wearing black suits so he never has to deal with like folds and seams and all that overall really really brilliant i think there's a lot of really good takeaways from that and uh, it's a nice, fun page. But yeah, beautiful shape here. This brings me back up. I come up here, his hands, this, the swish to this, to this, and I'm out. You know, it reads very bouncily. And he keeps the perspective. It was funny. I did a review uh, yesterday that I just sent a guy this morning. Um, and he actually was doing a lot of straight up and down backgrounds. So Benjamin, if you actually watch this video, the one thing that I'll say that makes this a little bit different is this is not an action scene. So your, your pieces that you had the straight up and down perspective, those were exciting scenes where that was the moment where you could turn the camera like this and still do your straight up and downs. But this is a little more um, pedestrian, so we get this, all right? Everyone, hit thumbs up on the video right now. You're loving this. If you've stuck it out this far, you're like, this is good, Rich. This is good. I need this. So <clears throat> this is actually a little bit more of an exciting page, but I still think that this is what I would consider an in-betweener. Trust me, I have far more boring pages, but we're just going to go in order. Uh, you know what? I actually don't want to go in full screen mode just because uh, I probably will be writing on this a little bit. I didn't realize that. Was I've got a, I was doing some stuff in Photoshop earlier, and I had sort of a weird look. All right. So let's look at this page. So we've got basically a hero uh, sneaking into ESU, <clears throat> which I'm not 100% sure what that is. Um, ESU physics building. All right, I guess it's a, the university or something. Um, so anyway, so, you know, we established that he's outside the ESU and it's night. He did that very, very simply and quite effectively. This doesn't look like it burned up a lot of brain cells for him to like work out this panel. You know, you could you could have gone way farther and drawn the school and you know pick some crazy shot, but Todd gets you in and out. This isn't what we want to see on the page. So we've got a guy hiding in the shadows again, very very straight up and down perspective on this because nothing really is super exciting is happening yet. Um, and uh, then he this is a very very interesting storytelling thing that he did here. He's got the guy. I would have, I would love to have seen the script for this, um, but uh, I mean, you definitely get the impression that he's in a back alley or maybe like a loading zone. That's what what the, the sense that I get, and it is to an alley behind the SU physics building. So again, he didn't draw the alley. He just drew a truck backed up against a wall. Barely drew the truck. He, like he didn't want to draw the truck. So what did Todd do? He did this. What would Todd do? Todd would stick it barely sticking in the panel. Todd, I love you. Love you. <laughs> uh, all right. So <laughs> he, he's brilliant, right? Come on. The guy is incredible. Uh, so um, <laughs> this is really, really cool. This is a very nice shot. The hands are super exciting. Um, it was smart. You know, he's got just this beautiful little suggestion of cape here. But this is the, the money right here. This is very, very fun how he did this. Uh, and it looks like he maybe has multiple uh, special effects that he can do. So he's got like some sort of a whizzer effect and then he actually can melt it. Or maybe that's the effect warming up. But this is nice and probably I would assume not called for in the script. It was probably like he starts hitting buttons on his thing and then he sends a bolt out and does this. But Todd came up with this really kind of fun sort of connection that those two panels have i think it's clever this is nice so the guys broke into the the esu building now at this point um it's it's like the hallway at night uh, you know there's plenty here i see that he broke in i don't need to see more there's not more that i really need to concern myself with in this panel so this is very very effective and probably quite quick for him to draw and then we get uh, until in a top floor lab, there's 
there's the safe now with the proper application of okay so he's breaking into a safe and uh there we go so a little bit more of exciting content but uh, i think well handled and some clever ideas i think the the big takeaway for me is he had to draw a truck he didn't draw a truck <laughs> He had to draw on breaking into the building. He didn't draw that. These are shortcuts that will help you get through these more menacing pages to get to the fun stuff. So this, we'll just do this one since it's here. So this is a big cocktail party. Granted, Peter Parker is actually dressed as Spider-Man, which is, is funner to draw than, than other things. But Peter is not flying around. There's not a lot of crazy stuff going on. Hopefully I can rotate this, yeah. So he's got, a, like he turns the panel He's got a nice, you know, perspective going on here. Um, this is a pretty complicated, I mean, this is definitely not like what I would consider a beginner or in intermediate sort of shot. Maybe it, it, like sort of advanced and intermediate for this. This would take a little a little patience um, to set it up. You know, it's, it's like, this is what I recommend to people if you're working with perspective. If you can get anything in your sketch, like if you just go... I know I want a table here and I want people standing around it. If you can get this locked in, you can start to find the, the you know what I mean? The vanishing points of everything. That's gonna help you set up the page. So do your sketch and anything that works in your sketch, use that as sort of the platform to build around it. But again, most of the men, if not all of the men are in black suits. So he never has to draw them in wrinkles. The women are just suggestions. There's n almost no faces on them other than little, you know, indicators of, you know, that kind of thing going on. It's a very bloopy brush, but you get what I'm saying. Um, you know, if he had a head to the side, it's going to be this kind of thing, you know, little stuff like that. You can see it here and here, you know, it works fine. I mean, it's, it's totally good. You can tell that these are shrimp. Um, just by a little wiggle waggle on the thing. So it's really nicely done. So again, Todd plays with the sizes of things. We have figures that are all this size. And then we get this nice big shot of Mary Jane Watson. And she looks cool. She looks attractive. We've got the bosoms popping off. Her face is pretty. Her hair is attractive. And we can tell Peter is sad. But again, he's still using the very straight up and down perspective for these backgrounds but this was an exciting shot peter comes in it's like bam i'm sunk oh my god and and he he turns it this is disorienting this is making me feel action but then this is a calmer beat this is calm he this is cool blacks out all the faces and all we're focused on is them he leaves room for the word balloons and then peter breaks the panel here and actually says hi folks with his hand outside the panel and and he's actually facing into the page which is a little tiny bit unusual but it stops the action right there because he's turned if he was if he was facing the other way if he was facing this way maybe even looking up let me grab the black but if if he was facing this way up and his hand was like maybe he was gesturing back over uh, him himself like this the hand kind of up and, and looking off this way, we would head out of the page quicker, but because he's actually facing into the page, we do stop right here. I mean, this is definitely the, the stop beat on this, but this is a nicely laid out page. I think that he was economical within reason. I think that this is, a, this is an intense panel, but he didn't go nuts on the background here. Everything is pretty simple. It's drawn just enough to get the point across and, um, Todd said in an interview one time when I was just getting into comics that he would set a stopwatch and he would basically give himself about an hour a panel. I would assume for a bigger panel like that, he might give himself two or three hours. Um, so, you know, I think he could draw an ink up panel like this a lot quicker. So here we go. This is a doc page. These could be tough. You know, you read this in a script, you're like... Oh shit, I've seen a doc in Grand Theft Auto and um, some of my Sin City comics, but uh, man, I've never I've never been to a doc. I've never drawn one. So let's see what cues Todd uses to establish this. So one thing that I absolutely love is 
this is the dock area. We really feel that we're on either a loading dock and we can see that we're near the water because of this. Just this right alone tells us that he's near the water. We don't need any other indicator of that other than that. That is the, the deal, whatever you want to call it. That seals the deal. This is all nice, um, you know, uh, accoutrements to that idea. Let me grab my right out again. Um, and then I love this. I love this. What the fuck? Why is it? Sorry, friends. Um, I like this a lot. I like the fact that, that, that if you've ever been to a city where the dock area is, usually there's buildings a little bit of ways. The, the, the big buildings don't tend to be right on the dock. So this is very simple, but it actually gives me even a little bit more of a sense of space and, and um, depth to it. And I think that that's very, very nice. And again, we've got almost no detail on the jacket. He blacked out the face. This is mis mysterious. This is at nighttime. We've got enough boxes to sort of show that something is going on. And then um, we get uh, uh, whoever this guy is. I don't know. He looks like Commissioner Gordon to me, but I know that that's not possible. <laughs> Uh, he's wearing fancy boots too. <laughs> he's fancy boots, Joe. Um, <laughs> so this is an interesting shot. I'm not crazy about the perspective on the dock, but it works fine. But it, it, it really almost feels like it's lifting up here, but it, it's, it's fine. There's, there's not a huge deal to me. And this is nice. He's, he indicates a little bit of water. He's got this and this, and it's just, it's well done. Again, the only guy that we actually see his suit is this guy, and I'm curious if there's a reason why he's in blue, other than the fact that if he was in black, he would blend into this guy a little bit more. But uh, I don't know. I don't know the story, if there's a significance, like uh, maybe these guys are more higher up, and then this is just more of a thug. Um check and mate a fellows too bad and again we're gonna see immediately right here size 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 small medium larger larger okay and then medium and then uh, pretty much medium the hand is about the same size as these guys but he makes it exciting because of the size relationship and again to me i soak in this whole image as one thing so he really went small medium medium large and then larger and then back to medium and then these it kind of goes medium to small so it's it's exciting and and look at the shapes he he i'll make this a little bigger so you can see it more and actually let me just do this yeah i mean he he swings us this way he swings us this way we really are focused here this all sort of brings us here we've got this and there's this nice circular motion here and this is a nice stop beat, but I mean, you, there's no doubt in your mind that you go like this and then he brings you right back around up and then out. So it's a very, very fun sort of dance through his actual storytelling. So it's an exciting page, you know, but maybe it's more exciting content. So here's another one with people standing around. Granted, they're superheroes. We've got, uh, what is this? Sandman? I think it's Sandman and, uh, Spider-Man. So... Not, I guess this is still the docks. Yeah, it is. It's still the docks. So he's got this here in the water. So he, he establishes that there, which is good. You know, Will had said this to me one time about like, like establish whatever you need to, like in the first panel, if you can do it, and then you don't need to draw it anymore. You, you can just do stuff like this. And, and Todd does that. Do you see? It's like, just get it out of the way one time, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, get it out of the way one time and then, uh, you know, then, then, uh, get down to business. And Todd has got the like creeper stuff creeping in like the truck where it was like, he drew just enough. So we've got the high buildings in the background. This could either be downtown or it could be this stuff. It's a little difficult to tell. It doesn't really matter. Um, he was he did a smart move which is spider-man is very truncated so he didn't have to draw a ton of spider-man he's got enough of him out that he really didn't need to figure out this pose which i think if he actually did figure out the pose uh there's almost not enough room for the body like this is super super small uh, and i know todd's you know uh what do you want to call it like that's his thing on spider-man as he puts him in impossible poses but the amount of space that he would need to actually be in this pose would be a little bit closer to this. 
So he really brought him down. If you think about the rest of his body, for this to be here and then for this to come back around, it would it would be different. But this is fine. It works. He's just super, super trunking. But but here's the deal. He only drew part of this, and he only drew part of this guy because he's covered by, by Spider-Man. This guy is covered by this guy. So he shows you five people in this panel, and yet he never really had to draw more than about 40%, 40 to 50% of anyone. It's clever. This is nice. The perspective is a little off on Spider-Man. He would look a little, I think, more... You know, it's a little more like that. But anyway, it just looks like he's falling backwards. And then this is nice, you know? You got this attractive shot of her and then him talking. And, then, and uh, you know, it's all good. You immediately move to this. It's funny how quickly you get sent to this. That open panel really makes this sort of a very um, exciting beat of the story. So... Again, not the most boring page. Trust me, I, I threw these in. It's, we're going a little bit out of order. But I threw these in because some of the other pages were really, really dull. Um, but uh, this is a nice shot. I mean, he it's it's the exterior of, I don't know if it's their home or a guest home or wherever, Bedford Towers. All right, so, so it's something fancy. But he tells me that it looks fancy. The windows are big enough that you go, well, that's definitely not a poor person's house. They got a nice railing. That looks kind of fancy. This is a fancier door frame than you might have in a traditional house or a shitty motel where it's like square. So this all looks quite luxurious and he never ever drew anything luxurious. This in fact, there's no even furniture in it. Um, and the size relationships, again, we've got small, little bigger than that. These are kind of medium. This is about the same size as this, but this whole thing feels bigger you know this is the big shape that you look at so small to large you know and it's a nicely designed page too um you know he's got a real strong shape that cuts here and sends me here and then this helps too but the like the shadow on the floor is really at a weird angle i mean i i personally think that it would go more like that if it was on the floor the ground plane sort of this is super elevated, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. And this is interesting. I mean, he's, I mean, I don't know. People are more in tune to this whole 360 rule, but it is interesting that he's looking off this way because that definitely will make you stop and, and stick here. And then we get this. So Todd sometimes has unusual directions that he puts the head. Okay, so this is kind of interesting, I thought. So we've got basically the exterior of the city. People talking in a high-rise building. We cut to the inside, and it's a desk scattered with clippings of Spider-Man. Cigarettes. Someone's been waiting and studying that coffee to stay awake. It's all there, you know? I know that whoever this person is is obsessed with Spider-Man. I don't even need to read the pages before or after to know that that this whoever this is has been obsessed with Spider-Man. There's the amount of time that it took to do this. There's stimulus to keep him going and enough articles to let me know. And then these look, guys look like trouble. I don't really need to see them to know that these are bad guys. And then this is pretty intimidating. This is a reveal. Peter Parker will belong to us. It brightens up and this is the 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 delivery of it that's good and then we've got this crazy bottom panel which is cool it's nice what would Todd do here we go all right so what do we got here we have hero on top of a building clearly near the docks um, this is a little hard to read for me. Um, okay. He's got a big mug and some sort of maybe like beeper. I don't know what that is. Um, this 
storytelling is a little tricky for me based on that we're sort of looking at these pages out of order. But anyway, we can see that these guys are talking here. This is a super, super narrow panel. Um, there was a decent amount of dialogue that he had to deal with. Um, now, I don't know for a fact that um, he got dialogue with his original script. If it was a classic Marvel-style Marvel script, there is a chance that this was scripted after that. I don't know. Um, anyway, so he says, The pleasure is mine. Uh, we've got the inset with the newscaster. Um, I guess they're at the airport and these are little TV monitors like in chairs he could chill at. It's a very, very empty airport. I mean, he could have easily just had backs of seats here with people sort of sitting in them with maybe TV monitors in front of them. You know, just a suggestion of it. Like, you know how the rows are. Um, and maybe even some silhouettes. And not that he needed this. I'm just saying and some silhouettes of other people waiting. You know, or one or something. Uh, maybe that could have been black, and then that could have been one of those just halo silhouettes. But we clearly know that they're at the airport now because it's, we see a plane taking off. Um, and then we cut to the inside of the plane, and we've got this millionaire again, black suit, doesn't have to draw anything. And, um, oh, sorry. I was trying to remove that than a tight shot on him. But he does he still plays with the small. We've got small points of interest. Bigger. And this is really weird too. I didn't really point that out, but uh it's funny that he cropped their heads like that. I could definitely see an editor saying, um can you move them up in the scene a little bit? That seems a little weird with it like that. And he's like, I'm Todd McFarlane, you realize that uh Todd does what he wants. This is really nice right here, though. Her face is pretty, even with that little bit of it showing. But then we've got the big. Bigger, not huge. but And this panel, actually, in some ways, is gives you a, a bit of a big and small read. Okay. Here we go again. Nice sense of height. And, and look, he made this panel so narrow. He didn't have to draw any of the other shit. This description could have been, we need a we need a, a sprawling city with this huge high rise and we need to know, and Todd went, all you need to know is that they're near a big building. There's the big building. I'm gonna cut out everything else and I'm gonna save room for this big shot of the chameleon. I'm gonna spend my money on his hands. That's where my time is gonna be invested. But this is a nice shot. He keeps it simple, it's silhouetted all up in here. He's got just some simple perspective here. It looks like uh, maybe this is an office or something inside the building that you can sort of see into. And then um, these two women uh, walking through a lobby. But he just, again, he just pokes stuff in. It's actually really, really clever. I've never looked at Todd in this light before, so this is really interesting to do, which is to see, to, to not focus on the insanity and the badassness that he does on all the over-the-top stuff, but to actually really... I've always enjoyed that part of his work, though, that, I mean, like, he can draw someone having coffee at a table, and it is interesting, but I've never made it a study like what we're doing right now. And this is nice, and again, he didn't have to draw the office because he made it all silhouetted. And then we've got, um, you know, sort of like the mysterious figure who we then see very quickly is the chameleon. And there's just enough tchotchkes on his desk to, to go, oh, okay, so, you know, it looks like a cup of... May, this could actually be what we were looking at before, which was, you know, clippings of Peter Parker and whatnot. So, nice page, real nice. And, you know, we've got small, medium... And then large, you know. And he creates a nice sense of height with the, the length of the panels. I think it's very, very cool. Good stuff to learn from. All right. Let's see what we got here, Mr. Todd. Creepy guy approaches Mary Jane, I believe, and, and pins her to a wall. Very straight background in this. It's fine. doesn't bother me. I think it works. It's not so much of an action scene. Uh, and also, it's not like we didn't see him come up to her and then hit his arms against the wall. If that was the case, then you could maybe have had um, like him coming into the panel like that and then maybe turned it a little bit as he pushed it just to show that now things are off balance and, and things are out of the ordinary. But anyway, then Peter comes up behind him and... This is nice. You know, he pulls in real tight and just draws what he needs to, which is Peter scolding this dude for being a douche. 
Um, and then this guy goes for a, a karate back kick kind of vibe. And it's not the most exciting pose in the world, but it's efficient. And um, Peter just looks completely unimpressed. He's just standing there and doesn't do anything. And it looks like the guy maybe keeps continuing to kick him based on the three dialogues. So I'm assuming he kicked him a few times and he's just standing there taking the kicks. And, uh, you know really simple he could have had to draw the shit out of that panel and yet he he made it more like this i don't feel bored and i don't feel like he's shortchanging me on any of these pages do you feel the same way do you get that impression that it's not i'm not looking at this and if i was the editor or the writer that i would go man he's kind of taking the lazy way out like this is not that good i don't get that sense at all this is nice Peter's, you know, kind of poking in the panel. We've got Mary Jane again. He was smart. He didn't have to draw both of her eyes. Uh, so that saves him some time. And the symmetry on that can be kind of a pain in the ass. Then we've got this guy coming up and sort of like he's upset. Maybe he's the host of the party. And then they're talking and, and uh, you know, the perspective on this kind of does this. A little bit of that sort of vibe going on. And then... Um, you know, they walk off into the, you know, party, and this guy's sort of annoyed and pissed. Size relationships on this page aren't as extreme as some of the other pages, but, but what will happen is when you do stuff that's a little bit more similar in size, um, I, I feel like we would move through this page pretty fast, you know? This is going to hustle me through this page quick, which is interesting, because it's not that interesting of a page overall. The story might be, but, um, you know, I feel like, like we kind of get through it quickly. Okay. This is a little exciting, but a little not. So, again, he's not too adventurous with his perspective. I mean, but it's not a fight. It's just stuff kind of going on in his scenes, but... He's got, you know, so his horizon line is somewhere right here. I, whatever you call it, like eye line. Kind of cuts through here. So in theory, anything above that, you would start to see bottom planes. He doesn't really play that up too much. Well, he does right here. Do you see the bottom planes under this monitor? But yeah, any, anything above this, Oops, sorry, like that right there. You should start to see a little bit of the underneath a bit more. But then if you look at this, this actually, he broke his own rule because that is, had as its own vanishing point right here. So it's a little lifted. In theory, it would be a little more like this. And that would be not drawn. That would be the shape of it a bit more. So not the crime of the century, as I like to say, but uh, that's wrong. I think it's wrong. I'm, I'm nearly sure. I, I, I doubt myself, but but uh, I'm pretty sure that that would not be accurate. And this is weird too. It's really kind of like at an odd angle. It would be kind of more like that. This, again, the vanishing point is like, or a horizon line is like right there. So he doesn't need this dropping down so much. But it looks cool. It's fine. I got love for my tots too. This is nice. I like this a lot. It's so simple, you know? Interior of a jewelry store, guards protecting it. You know, some of us would draw, like, the whole freaking jewelry store. We'd have the cases all around it and the guards standing in the room and, you know, there would be shit here and shit here and bookshelves or, you know, like, shelves behind them and all that. I mean, that's kind of where, like, my mind would go. And then next thing I know, I'm spending five or six hours on that panel to do it when an effective way that gives me all the cues is I know that this stuff is expensive because it's in cases. This could be a museum or whatever. But um, And then I know that guards are watching it. The coloring on this is really bad. As this is, I think, a post. I'm not sure. It like, feels like that should be separated from that a little bit more. But it's just everything is sort of... Uh, beige brown and this is nice nice little sequence goes real fast he knocks out the guard it's a really really nice page and we've got our sizes we've got a big read we've got the medium reads and small you know it's even kind of small so the variety is nice 
Oh, Todd, we love you. All right. Aunt May. She's checking to see if Peter shaved, apparently. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what she's doing. Nagel. <laughs> Assuming that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, so, Aunt May. Again, everything is very vertical in Todd's world. But, you know, that's something that, that you can you can try to use for yourself. He uses very simple perspective for these more mundane pages. Um, I like this. I like, you know, again, he didn't ha force himself to have to draw their ears, the back of the head. It's not like he went in and pulled in where you see them really facing each other. And you've got, you know... Peter's standing here, and Aunt May is, you know, got her hand on his face, and you, do you see how, like, a more full shot would take a lot longer to do? And we don't really need to spend that much time on it. This gets the point across. Her hand looks good. This is nice. And then Peter's shocked to see Mary Jane shows up looking fabulous, and um, then they hug. They hug it out. He didn't even want to draw this picture, so he decided he would draw the back of the picture frame. No. <laughs> that is kind of funny, though. It's just like... This is a very low table, too. I have no idea what's going on here. Maybe this is a coffee table? This thing looks like it's literally, like, like a foot off the ground. I don't know. And I feel like they're in, the, in a hallway outside of a house, but I guess the Nagel poster would indicate that they're inside of a house or apartment. All right, what is this? The Commissioner Gordon looking guy. Um, this is nice. Silhouetted suit, I'm down with that. Exterior of a very fancy hoity-toity party about to take place. Maybe people are just beginning to show up. It doesn't look super crowded yet. So maybe this is the early crew and this guy is sort of, he's preparing for the party and a few people are starting to show up, but he's about, he's going to get down to some shenanigans before people really, really show up to the party. Uh, but we've got our big read. We've got a nice medium sized headshot. We have a great establishing shot. That's perfect. Um, you know, Todd made it where he didn't have to draw the tires on this car and this car is far enough away where he didn't have to draw much of that. Todd's very, very clever with that. And then this is good. You know, you didn't have to draw her face. This guy's got his back to him and then this guy is partially covered. So he didn't have to draw too much of him. This is good. And then this is good. Todd, you're teaching me so much. All right. Now we've got beautiful women in towels reacting to this pervert the the girls locker room it's a fraternity creep and they're throwing things at him but anyway let's get to the nuts and bolts of this so creepy guy busts in on a bunch of babes at a sorority uh, uh, probably and they're in towels and uh, different stages of undress and uh they're shocked it's nice, though. I mean, he drew enough. I mean, you could have gone really crazy with this and made it a much bigger panel. I, I do like this, though. I think it's very efficient. We definitely get a sense that it's girls in towels and, and um, they weren't expecting this guy. They throw stuff at him. He didn't have to draw too much of um, the guy's costume or body there. And then we, we get that kind of payoff of what he's like wearing here a bit more. And here, too. You can see a little bit of it. Um, but it's nice. It's it's an energetic thing. I really like this shape that he used right here is really good. I love the action with everything sort of flinging at him. But there is a circular sort of vibe to it. I said this in another video where we looked at Todd's stuff and I said, you have to understand that not only did Todd submit tons and tons of packages to ultimately get hired by Marvel Comics or uh, Eclipse, I think was his first job, was at Coyote and then a little bit of DC work, if I think. Um, but, uh, through that process, Todd probably had to be so versatile in terms of imagine you send out 30 packages and no one replies, but finally an editor does reply. 
or they give you a little bit of feedback and they say, look, this stuff isn't very good. You need to look at more George Perez. So now for the next three months while Todd works on new samples, he's studying George Perez or he's studying John Byrne. He's trying to figure things out along the way. So what, what ended up happening for Todd is all those rejections made him have to constantly reevaluate how he was doing things. And within that, that's what built all of these muscles that he has and all of these ideas that he has with his incredible creativity and personality and stuff like that. So Todd not only draws good at this point, but he's 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 been through a thousand battles and most of them failures. So he had to figure out what worked just based on that because he was never going to get hired if he didn't keep massaging things to get it right. So this is nice. It's more detailed than most s scenes that he would generally do. So for whatever reason that day, he was feeling um, inspired to actually not just make it all black and take a little bit of white and do it but uh you know it looks really really good it it's possible it could have been light boxed from a photo i don't know that for a fact but it looks good you know it looks it looks nice so however he did it this works it's a little more detailed than i would normally expect for him to do on something like that but I'm down with it. And then he's got this nice establishing shot of the living room. So he actually really worked harder than we've seen him work on this page, I feel. Um, I think there's an attention to detail a little bit more on this piece. Um, and uh, you can really see him kind of flexing his drawing muscles here. Um, and yet it's not overdone. You know, he didn't find the need to go in and put, you know, detail on the couch and it's not some sort of designy carpet and uh he has a tendency i'm noticing to put objects here that lead you into the scenes so one takeaway that you might want to get is is uh for his a lot of his shots he will actually stick items usually establishing type shots where it's an environment he puts a few things right there so that might help you fill a little bit of space and uh makes things a little easier for you so here we go we have, I guess, the maybe the exterior of their apartment. I don't know. Uh, so we've got people um, or someone talking inside of the building, and uh, he just opted to not even draw it. It's just all a silhouette, and then he drew a little bit of this building and some silhouettes of the building in the back. I'm fine with this. This doesn't bother me. It doesn't look super lazy. And based on the level of detail on the rest of the page, it seems to fit in that world. That's an important thing too, is if you're going to um, pull back on the level of detail, it can't be out of character for your art. People that draw a lot of detail all the time and then get more simple, it can sometimes stand out as like, well, what happened here? Why is all of a sudden the art look different? So, you know, it's, it's you need to figure out one, how, how, um, how much time you want to spend on your pieces and then the, the relegate the level of detail that you're using. So anyway, Mary Jane starts to, I guess, put her stuff away. She chucks her purse. She's pulling off her trench coat and it's a little bit of an awkward pose. And i you know, the word balloon kind of covers up this, but, but it's fine. It's one of his very straight up and down shots. Again, it's just kind of what he does. This is the same way. He doesn't use super crazy angles, but it seems to work for him. And this helps is that he did actually then have a shot like this where you get more of a different sort of vibe going on. My line was a little bit off. Um but uh yeah, you know what I mean? He's 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 got something that's a little more exciting here and then this helps too. So he's got his smalls his more mediums and then this is a little bit bigger so it's nice this is cool i like this with her breaking the panel border here it makes it a really fun and exciting thing and also the silhouette of these guys so he took a somewhat boring page and actually made it a little bit bouncy and kind of fun i think you know he's got it, this is nice too the um this and then this to this and this it's got a good swing to it you see that you really kind of have fun going through this figure swing a ling and even this is lively okay mm -hmm. more cocktail party oh my god so 
I don't remember if this is the same exact one. This is the Duncan Civic Center, so this may be a different cocktail party that they went to, but uh, this is fine, you know? I mean, this is enough of an exterior of the building that I get it. We only see one person standing here, so I don't know if that's Peter waiting for Mary Jane or if it's just someone else at the event looking out the window, uh, and it could just be anyone, but uh, this almost feels like cameras going off to me maybe it is maybe it isn't but it looks like they get they do get out of a car onto what looks like a red carpet here or at least something like that but i don't know these these like almost feel like like paparazzi but he didn't show it so yeah i don't know um tuxedos limousines millionaires well it's not exactly like saturday night at the coffee bean but it'll do so anyway and then Mary Jane looks very attractive. He's got her in a very contemporary um, dress for the time. It's very cutting edge. She looks very beautiful and uh, ready to go. She sort of dwarfs Peter with her model size. It's a nice touch. This is cool. Again, he opens it up. We're able to breathe. He creates a little bit of a sense of perspective that, that some of the other stuff doesn't have as much. And then this is a more simple version of the cocktail party scene that we saw before um, with really just a suggestion of all the people. It's very, very clever. And then this is quite simple, but it does harken back to that other room, which had the banister, the staircase, another banister that sort of went this way, and then some pillars, you know, and he didn't go nuts with the pillars and have all this sort of stuff it's not that's not the battle that you need to fight on this particular page save that energy for the the money shot pages i think your call of course you know you may have a different idea so this is just him sort of i don't know what what in the world he's doing but uh i like the size relationships of it so there's not nothing really overly exciting going on but I think it's just, it's big, it's small, it's big again, and then this nice shot. And then, again, I'll point out that he's got the character facing an unusual direction. You know, him looking this way really will make you stop on him. But then he's on the move, and then there's this pause again. You know, and Todd, I've noticed a few times, has been drawing characters actually standing on the panel border. We've talked about that before, that I personally think that it works better with a cartoony style and more realistic styles. It's almost kind of breaks the, whatever they call it, the third wall or fourth wall, whatever it is. One of those walls. Um, but yeah, I think for cartoony styles, that, that actually is, is a, a decent little thing that you can do. I thought this was a nice page. This would be hard, you know? most of us I think would overthink this a little bit but he keeps it pretty cut and dry so we've got them finishing the log ride you know you've got the fence to indicate you know they keep the people out and this is the roof of maybe where you uh, where you board and unboard on it and then we've got a shot of the exterior of the magic kingdom he keeps it simple you know he put the camera angle at a point where it's not like really really hard to draw and then we've got this nice shot of um, them sort of like walking through the park it's fine you know I'm there. I'm enjoying it. It looks fun. I want to go to Disneyland right now. Get in line at the Pirates of the Caribbean or Haunted Mansion. Do it. <laughs> Talk show page. Oof. Oof. -a. All right. So, this is very odd looking, but it's fine. But, yeah, he's, he's like... Uh, I'm going to switch this. It's bugging me that it's on that one. It should be a little smaller. A little further back. It just he feels a little big and a little too over. Like it's like he's not fitting behind the desk super well, but they're all sort of in in line. Um so Peter Black Jacket helps. They've got the he's got a little bit of the thing. We've got the microphone. It's nice. It's simple. He didn't draw a lot of the couch. He didn't really have to draw super, super detailed of them like sitting um, in super cross-legged positions and things like that. Having the co-host guy sort of off panel a little bit helps Todd expedite some of the um, drawing challenges involved. And it's smart, you know? He cropped it good. This is good too. Crop, you know? Tight. He draws less, but it's all there. We see everything that we want to see, but he didn't have to draw it all. 
backstage same deal he just shows you the curtain and a little bit of this and a few a little odds and ends that's it we're not seeing full tables of all the stuff and you know people milling around and standing backstage and you know another curtain over here that you have to draw and you know maybe a table of more props whatever you know you could really kind of go bananas with this but you don't necessarily need to. And then this is nice. Again, Mary's Mary Jane's dressed very fashionably. Um, he keeps the curtain straight up and down, so he doesn't have to deal with any sort of weird angles on it. And then it's them watching like the monitor backstage or, or a news news thing. But uh, yeah, it's good. We'll do like three more. I don't think I'm going to go through them all. These take a little longer than I than I thought. But the nice thing is, is you can use the same tool and just sort of go through your comics and really start to pay attention to what we got going on. So I don't know if he's looking at a clone, if he's looking at himself in a mirror. We've got a little bit of a dart gun sort of poking into the thing. Yeah, so he says, you, you're me. And so it's like a Jonah Jameson clone. And I guess they're going to knock out the real Jonah Jameson. So this is nice. And again, he pulled in tight. So he didn't have to draw a bunch of clothes and things like that. And this, the same deal. Um, him even face planning, you know. Some people might have drawn it as like a down shot, you know, with him uh, maybe sitting at a table. And he goes down and, you know, the other guy is standing here in front of him with the, his hand out or right hand out. And, you know, you could make something much more complicated out of it. But he just went like, I'm just going to show what I, they really want to see, which is his face in the plate. And then we get the exterior shot. So we realize that we're outside of, I don't know, uh, this is... It looks like a fast food restaurant to me, but I don't think that it is. But maybe this is part of the campus or something. But there's a big wall and things. This doesn't look like a, a, a campus to me, but I've never seen campuses in New York. So maybe they are like that there. And this is interesting. He actually drew a full van. I'm surprised. A little bit surprised. But he did put it at an angle where he didn't have to deal with a lot of like complicated stuff, which was smart. It's a really that's a really big takeaway because, um, you know, drawing vehicles and stuff like that, the challenge like the challenging parts will be the wheels or if it's like some sort of military vehicle it could have tread or tanks have those crazy wheels, whatever it is. But you know what I mean? If you pick your angle strategically and it works within your page, you can save yourself some time and not have to draw as much. So him him you know he gets to black out a couple of tires this one you don't see the bolts and all that stuff and uh it worked out well for him and he drew a full thing but again he's still got the stuff poking into the panel you know to frame it and then this is nice and he pulled in tight so here we go in the car there's another like limousine page it might come up right after this but so talking heads he kept them all similar sizes that will definitely make you move through the piece faster so it's like everything is whoa sorry everything is the same size that's going to immediately move you through quickly and if you notice another thing that he did is he sends you like this he brings you together and then sends you out so that's i talked about that when i was describing fight scenes it's like compressed expanded compressed and then expanded and it's like that's not as expanded as thing but he kind of turned the panel shape so we were heading down but then he moves us this way we're looking out now and up so just shifting the shot the little tiniest bit where he brings the camera over here looking at them but then they're looking off he said like this direction you know up and out so it works well okay what is this so dmv <laughs> establishing shot he kept it somewhat simple it's it's you know not a lot of crazy detail on the building it works good hot off the presses we've got a little bit of an awkward perspective in here uh, but it's fine but this looks a little low 
it's like the walls and stuff are kind of doing weird things and then this is a little bit weird this is good though and this is actually again this is a little more detailed for him sometimes he's just like he will draw more that's an interesting thing but but uh you know we've got people in different kind of little costumes and stuff and and uh, it all looks real nice and then this is good this is like some look like, slightly more complex we've got this divider and things over here and um even this little thing that comes down this is uh, this is a little trickier i almost feel like there could be a divider this way too you know like in between each of these desks it doesn't have to be but it's a little too far but you see what i'm saying like a little piece of glass maybe i'm just so used to COVID now that i think everything should have glass separating it and this is cool i like i like that he broke the panel and then this is a great shot right here this is really really nice um yeah this is really good really really good and then this is fun then we got felix whoa jesus great okay. brush felix the cat the wonderful wonderful cat all right and then that okay so last we'll do one more and then we're gonna end this uh, let's let's look another one. Let's we'll find something different. Oh, this is cool. We'll do one more after this. I thought this was a nice page. Mary Jane's legs look super hot right there. It's a really good shot. All right, so we've got the Learjet flying them off to fantastic locations. We have some sort of fancy airport. Maybe Australia? I don't even know. It doesn't look like anywhere I live. So they're really living the life of luxury. Just this silhouette leads me to believe that they've gone somewhere quite exotic although it says los angeles international airport but i don't know it looks fancy to me they got the limousines rocking i don't know why but this makes me think that it's a, a fancier car and then maybe i'm just projecting because uh they're clearly in the back of some sort of town car at this point but this is really good really really good this is all super nice gesture this is high level drawing right here this in particular is fantastically done her too this is this is no joke this is hard shit to draw and he nailed it it's really really good really good yep that's nice that would not be easy to draw and have it look so good this is smart though he covered up his her his knees with that could have been intentional it could just be incidental but um yeah, he knocked it out of the park with that drawing. And yeah, let's just end it on this. So it almost looks like they're like, uh, I mean, well, I know that this looks like a beach resort. For a split second, I thought it looked like the Hotel Dell, but it kind of doesn't either. Um, but anyway, so we've got a nice establishing shot of the beach. And there's no doubt that this is like, it's fancy. It doesn't look super fancy to me, but maybe this is like 1980s fancy. Um, it looks a little more like a... Um, holiday in with the way that the floors are but he did give them slightly fancier do you see the arced uh architecture there it does look a little bit more fancy square windows are going to look very cheap and sort of boring so if you if you have a building that's more fancy don't go for like just square windows we saw more window panes made it look more expensive curved uh doorways and stuff may look more ex uh, expensive and this again this is a really really nice drawing it's something that would be very very difficult to draw and make it look naturalistic as he does peter's gesture right here is great her figure looks very very cool she's sexy and hot she's got the glasses they're outside peter's in a very foreshortened pose with the way that he's laying here he's got his foot up we've got the seagulls floating there's a real nice touch that they they seagulls sort of hover so todd obviously had seen that before because they don't just fly they will like literally sort of freeze in the air and the ocean wind sort of just keeps them in one spot for a while but i get that sensation a little bit here could just be me projecting and this is really good too it's like he pulled in tight on peter and then she's like kind of leaning over and you know then he's like all right i'm chasing her wherever she's going i'm gonna go <laughs> race you to tokyo so all right i'm gonna end it there take your favorite comic books and let's do this you look through them and you find pages that would have been quote unquote boring pages or hard hard pages to draw because it's not the funnest stuff and look at what your favorite artist did to make it interesting or did they make it interesting or did they try to find shortcuts and if they use shortcuts what were those shortcuts what did they do to avoid drawing this stuff we could see that that todd about 15 to 20 percent of the time will do 
he'll dig in and he'll really go for it. And other times, maybe based on deadline or whatever it is, he'll actually find ways to um, not draw things but establish everything he needs. Both are legit. And it may just be one of those things like he knows that a page like this, fans are going to like drool over. It's like Mary Jane looking pretty, like in the limo too. So it was worth celebrating the characters to do it. But, you know, what else we got? Page like this, you know what I mean? He turns the camera, makes it like a little bit more interesting. This is a cool shot, and then this will make you pause. That circle will make you freeze. Sorry, have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Smash the like and subscribe if you haven't. Bye.